Okay, welcome back to Florida Naturally, and we have Norm Overfield here with us, and we are in Charlie's Fish House parking lot. Hi, Norm. What's what's going on here today? Well, we're here as uh, part of a dive club, a local dive club, the BC Buddies. We're actually here to measure this anchor that's been at Charlie's uh, restaurant parking lot for probably more than 30 years to try to... Uh, identify a little bit more information about the anchor's origin and history. The database we're going to enter into is called the Big Anchor Project. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a database that's run by the Nautical Archaeological Society in Great Britain. At this point there are 201 anchors in this database, so this will be 202 or 3 depending on whether we beat somebody else to the punch or not. Well we've all seen these anchors in front of restaurants and things and, and obviously they were used at one time. and. Uh, by taking the measurements, find out the manufacturer and maybe a little history behind it, right? Well, that's our goal. Uh, you can't really get into the database until you actually put an anchor in. So we don't know exactly what we're going to find when we go in there. But the, but the goal of the website is to help identify these pieces of history that are kind of sitting around all over the world, really. Jimmy Kaufmel, one of the owners of Charlie's Fish House in Crystal River, explains how one of his shrimp boat crews found the anchor. Well, you know, it got drug up in 1975 in the, in the summer, and uh, just a few days after we put it where it's at now, uh, some people approached us that it came off of a Confederate ship that was transporting gold from Atlanta, or left Atlanta, went to the coast, and they were trying to get to Mexico with it, but uh, they never made it. A Yankee clipper ship had sunk them. Mm -hmm. uh, just about west of Cedar Keys. Okay. Yeah. So there might be some gold out there. Might be, but I've <laughs> got a feeling it's been found. <laughs> the age of the anchor, that 1860s age, kind of jives with what we've already found in the website, which basically says that an iron stocked anchor, which this is, uh, these were not used until the 19th century, so 15. the 1800s would, would be kind of right in the ballpark as to what we kind of expect to find. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the the Great Britain people have to say about it too, because it might have been made over there, right? It's possible that a lot of the blockade runners, the ships were, were made in Great Britain, so this could be an anchor from one of those ships that may have been made in Great Britain or could have been Boston also, it's hard to say. BC Buddies also, uh, we did a project and I was on that dive. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the markings on the map and uh, us going out and searching for those, because I have a little footage on that too. Okay. We uh, did this a couple weeks ago, and we're kind of looking at doing it again sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, we are taking a look at the local wreck sites that are on the NOAA chart for this area, which is 11409. We basically are, are going to throw out there and try to find what remains of those sites and see if we can determine whether or not there are any historically significant sites or not in this area. And we did two of them and, and just really didn't find much, did we? <laughs> no, we went out there. <laughs> we looked at three sites that were pretty close together and didn't find anything, but that doesn't mean it isn't there. It just means we didn't find it. So we could have swam within 10 feet of it because that's about all the visibility was. <laughs> so, more like six feet, I think. Yeah, so we're, we'll be doing some more of that, and if we... If we Come up with something that uh, may prove uh, interesting, hard to say. Well, all these things are interesting, and, and you know, this is a, a dry land exercise and that's fun to do, and BC yeah, Buddies yeah. Is, uh, is a fun club. I'm a fairly new member, and uh, if, if somebody wants to get involved with BC Buddies, uh, how would they go about that? Best thing to do would be to just to call or email me. My phone number is 586-8620, and my email is normoverfield at kw.com. We meet uh, on the first Tuesday of each month uh, at 7 o'clock in the evening at the Keller Williams office out in Lacanto. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Norm. Sure Back to work. Back to work. Right. Let's see if we can sort this anchor out. Back to lunch at Charlie's is what we're going to do. <laughs> exactly. That's the fun part. <laughs> that was a real goal. <laughs> all right. Okay, you guys all set? All yep. set. Go see if you can discover something. Aye, Captain. <laughs> we're giving her all she's got. <laughs>